Hi guys, thanks for stopping by my channel, Making with Marilyn. On today's video, I'm going to be using an old shape that I've used in prior videos, and I'm going to put a new twist on them. Now, before we get started, if you find something in this video you like, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, leave them in the comment section. And if you'd like to see what I'll be working on in the future, please hit the subscribe button below the video. Then if you click the bell, YouTube should notify you when I upload new content. Okay, so getting started, I only want to make one set of earrings tonight. So I'm going to click on my design and I'm just gonna hide two of these earrings. I'm already connected to my maker and so I'm gonna click make it. Now I wanna move my earrings over to this side of my mat. This side of my mat is less worn than the other side. I'm going to click continue. Now for today's project I'm going to be using a beautiful bronze colored metallic leather. So I'm going to type in leather, click genuine leather, done, now, when I move the camera around, I'll show you that I do have a deep point blade in clamp B. I'll make sure to clean it. So let's go ahead and turn the camera around now, and we'll keep working. Okay, we need to get our mat ready. Hopefully you can see how pretty this leather is. It's a metallic leather, and it's a coppery brown. So I'm going to cut off enough leather for my earrings. And I'm just going to go about four inches square. So let me... <laughs> That's awkward. There we go. So I'll go about four inches square. That's really more than I need, but I want to be safe. Okay, so now before I put that on my mat, I also want to cut a piece of contact paper. And I'm going to cut that about the same size. So one, two, three, somewhere in there. I think I just did three and a half, but that's okay. This contact paper just really helps protect the mat because leather can be really hard on mats. It leaves a lot of fibers behind. Now the back side of this leather isn't very oh, fluffy or I don't know. It's, it's, it's very smooth. So I wouldn't expect this leather to leave a whole lot of uh, fibers behind, but I still want to go ahead and put down my contact paper. So I put this pretty side down, and my cut's going to start an inch down and an inch over. So I want to have a little bit of leather above the inch and to the right of the inch. Then I'll just take some good old scotch tape and add it all around this leather. And I want to have it so that it's not in the area of where my cut will be. I don't want my blade to have to cut through the scotch tape as well as the leather. Okay, so hopefully that's good. Let me go ahead and give it a good braying real quick. Okay, so we're going to load our mat. Now, before I do, you need to make sure your star wheels aren't going to roll over your leather. And then I want to check my deep point blade. First of all, make sure the deep point blade is in your maker. Second of all, clean any fibers off of the blade. So we're good there. So let's go ahead and load our mat. And 
and then we'll send it to cut. Okay, let's go ahead and unload that, check out the cut. Just in looking at it, it looks like it cut well, but let's see. Oh yeah, that's beautiful cut. So I'm just gonna kind of pull up on my leather. Actually push down on your mat and then your leather will start to come up. Now this side, the blade cut all the way through the contact paper, but that's not a problem. You just take that off. Okay, so when I look at these, I don't even see any frays. That is just gorgeous. So we'll go ahead and lay those down. Now I'm going to use some copper colored fish hooks for my earrings. So I'll lay those out there. So the first thing I need to do is cut holes in my earrings. So I have this tool I got from Harbor Freight with a coupon. It was about $6. And what you do is you just lay your little hole punch gently on your earring until you know it's in the right place. So I'm going to move this close to my face so I can see and adjust it as necessary. Okay, so I have that where I think it should be. And then I just press, squeeze it together. Excellent. And then do the same thing on this earring. Gently put it where you think it goes, but before you apply pressure, really look at it closely. Adjust it if you feel like it needs to be adjusted. Hopefully you can see that a little bit. And then press. Okay, so to put my hooks in, I'm going to hold, turn that over. Okay, I'm going to hold one side of the loop with a small pair of needle nose pliers. And then I'm going to take another pair and I'm just going to twist. Oops, let me do that again. So I'll grab a hold of the loop. And then with this pair, I'm going to twist. I think it's going to be easier just to hold it. Oh, much easier. Okay. So now I place this through my earring. And hopefully you can see that's still open. I'm going to grab it with my needle nose pliers and twist it back into place. And then I'm going to close it up just a little bit and there we go. Okay, so these are so soft, I don't really need a second pair of pliers. Just going to hold on to it and twist. Place my earring on. And then twist it back into place. And that's really nice and tight. Okay, so these are pretty. These are really pretty, but we're going to take it up just a notch. I'm going to cut some of this contact paper off, and this cut needs to be really nice and straight. So I'm going to trim off 
and use the line as my guide. Now I'll go down a half an inch. And I want to try to stay on this line just as well as I can. Okay, so I'm going to straighten this edge up just a little bit. Okay, so I work in a school and one of the students there showed me her earrings and she told me I needed to make some similar to hers. And what was different about hers was that the bottom two-thirds of the earring or so had glitter on them. So I'm going to tape off a straight line Now, let me adjust that just a little bit. And then I want to make sure that the other one's about in the same place. They're on opposite sides of my head, so if they're not exactly the same, that's okay. I'm not selling these. I'm just going to wear these myself. Okay. Oh. Oh, trying to get rid of the wrong side. Okay, so this one I also want to be about right there. I think that's a little bit low. Let's see. Okay, that looks pretty good. Looks good enough. So I'm going to take some Mod Podge. This is a matte Mod Podge, but since you're going to have glitter over it, it doesn't really matter if it's matte or glossy. And I'm just going to apply a liberal amount of Mod Podge. And I don't want to push under my tape. I want to go tape down. And the thing with this is, if I don't get enough on the first time, I can do multiple coats of the glitter. So if I have a little area that's missing glitter, or it's uneven for some reason, I can go back and fix that. Okay, so here's my glitter. It's gorgeous. It's an extra fine glitter. It's espresso. I believe I got this at Michael's, but it could have been Hobby Lobby. or I don't think it was Joanne's. I think it was either Michael's or Hobby Lobby. So I'm putting a liberal amount on because once it's dry, I will shake off the excess glitter. I'll catch it on my sheet and I'll put it right back in my glitter bottle. So now I'm going to leave those to sit for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then I'll show you what they look like at the end. Okay, so let's see how these earrings turned out. Take all the excess glitter off of the earring. Oh, those are pretty. Super pretty. Let me put this excess glitter back in the bottle and then I'll show you the earrings. Okay, here we go. Those are 
gorgeous. Let me turn this light on, see if that helps. There, I think you can see a little bit better now. Beautiful. I can't wait to wear those.